Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Okay, so today I'm going to be painting Winter Dance and I'm going to be sipping on my iced tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, purple violet, ultramarine blue, deep yellow, and Mars black. And of course, you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll use for a little bit of drawing later. And then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. And then I have a number one round synthetic brush. I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint. I'll even throw in the paper towel for you. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also a written step-by-step Step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our background. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, blue, purple, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to paint about three quarters of my canvas with just black, and then we're going to put a coat on the ground area as well. So I want my, my sky or my background to come down about three quarters of the way. So I'm gonna mark my, give myself a couple of markers so I don't go past that. So I'm gonna visually kind of pick the halfway point. I loaded my brush with black paint and I'm gonna give myself a marker about halfway between my finger or the halfway mark and the bottom of my canvas. So somewhere about there. And then you can use your brush as a measuring tool or just go through the same exercise on the other side kind of give yourself a marker in just about the same spot. And then all I'm gonna do with this top portion of the canvas is paint it black. Black covers really easily and you'll get a nice um, even coat with it. So you can certainly use any type of brush stroke that you want. You can use any quantity of paint that you want. I like mine to be pretty smooth so you'll see me doing a continual brush stroke once I get the paint on there and before it dries, I like to kind of make sure that it's got even thickness and that some areas are just making sure all the areas are covered and that I have equal th thickness throughout it. If you find that after you get the, um, after the paint dries, if you do have any little streaks or anything like that within the black paint, from it not covering all the way. You can certainly do a second coat on it, but this particular painting that we're doing, we're gonna have so much other elements in that are gonna cover this area of the canvas that I don't feel it's, for me, I'm probably not gonna do a second coat on this, even if there's little spots that have not been fully done. So I came down my three quarters of the way. You notice I don't, I didn't need a perfect line going across, just kind of brush my, um, paintbrush back and forth. This bottom portion I'm going to be doing with blue, purple, black, which I already have on my brush, and white. I just want it to be lighter than the um, than the sky, and I want it to look like there's maybe some snow drifts or some kind of light um, reflective type of wintry stuff on the on the ground. So I just picked up purple. I'm now picking up a little bit of blue and white and I'm really just going to kind of alternate those four colors, black, blue, purple, and white along this bottom. 
You can certainly make it as light or as dark as you want. We're going to be adding some additional information after we put in our street lamps and our people and all that stuff. So don't feel the um, need to have this perfect at this point. I might make it a little bit lighter in through here, but we'll be able to amp that up later when we um, put the people on and all that good stuff as well. So I'm just doing a left to right brush stroke so I can get these colors to blend in a little bit with one another. But again, I'm not terribly concerned if I have a perfect blend or if it all is, you know, a, a great gradient or anything like that. I'm really just looking to give myself some cool winter shadowy type of tones and that's where the purple and the blue come into play and then once you make your way up to the black I'm going to just kind of paint it right into the black so that way it almost looks like it's fading off into the distance and maybe going out of focus down at the bottom and through there and then we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step so once you've got your ground on here you can wash and dry this large brush Brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be doing the lamp glow. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I do want to forewarn you though that before you start the step that you want to make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to be doing the glow that's behind the actual lamp itself. So it'll be kind of glowing the atmosphere in the sky. And it's also going to be glowing on the ground as well. So we'll add some little bit of glow on the ground as well. So in this painting, what I'm attempting to do is do three lamps or lights from our lanterns how, uh, and make it like have some perspective. So we'll have the one that's closest to us, the tallest and the biggest. So that's going to be here. I'll have one. It's almost in the center of my canvas and through here. And then we're going to have the um, illusion of one down in through here, which was going to be providing the light behind our dancers. So we're going to position the dancers exactly in front of one of the lampposts. <laughs> so we only had to paint two lampposts instead of three, but we're going to provide the most light on this one in through here. So that way it gives a nice, beautiful, bright glow to the atmosphere so we can see that our, our winter dancers having a beautiful time in the park. So I'm going to be using a large brush. I'm not going to use a lot of paint. The colors that I'm going to be using are blue, purple, white, maybe a little bit of black if I wanted to have any kind of a grayish type of a tone, and perhaps a little bit of yellow when it comes to doing the center of these glow spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, a, the trick to this is never use a ton of paint. You can always add more, but it's tough to kind of back it off if you use too much. So I'm going to use a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and just a teeny tiny touch of white on my brush to start. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself three markers where I want the centers of these lamps to go. So I'm going to have my first one up here. The center is going to be maybe somewhere about there. This is just going to give me a couple of markers so I know as I am painting this, I've got a place to go. <laughs> so I just did a diagonal in through there. And then I'm going to start up on this one in through here. I'm really just looking to give myself a out of focus, faint, um, atmospheric glow around or behind these lamps. So by utilizing these cool colors, the blue, purple, and white, I want my areas to be a little bit bigger, but I started small on the cautious side. So I'm just reloading my brush with blue, purple, and white. Um, so I want these areas to to ha be soft and have this atmospheric glow to them. So I want my edges to be really just kind of um, disappear into the air next to them. So I am kind of doing a circular type of shape for this particular glow, but I do want it to just kind of disappear into the blackness and be maybe a little bit lighter in the center. We're going to be, when we, when we paint the lanterns themselves, 
We will have the light within the lantern to provide additional um, brightness to these areas. So if yours don't become as bright as you want them, that's okay. Know that you're going to have that next step later that will provide you with um, the light within the within the lamp. And I do know that because we're working on the black as a background that if you do not use white in your equation here for the glow that your purple and your blue will nearly disappear as they dry. So if your colors are getting a little bit darker than you had anticipated as they dry, just know that's because you have a black background and you'll want to amp up your white as you go through that process. So this one, again, I want this one a little bit brighter and bigger, so I am picking up my blue, purple, and white again, just to make sure that I have the um, the area as large as I want it. But I used a little bit more white in order to get this to be a bit brighter. I want this area to really encompass a much larger area than the other two because I know that I, again, am gonna have some people <laughs> in it and I wanna give that illusion of it being just a, a much, brighter light for whatever reason. Maybe this is, I don't know, maybe this lamppost is much bigger than the other ones and it just has a much larger luminescent quality <laughs> than the other ones. Or maybe I've strategically made it big enough to provide a great light source behind my dancers. So you can certainly have fun with making yours as big and bright as you want. I'm probably gonna amp up the center a little bit, but I, I think I'm gonna let it dry for a second. Um, and work on putting my glow, my lantern glow in my street as well. So that way, while this is kind of um, drying a little bit, I might make it a little bit brighter. I might not and just kind of let that sit for a minute. I'm gonna put my glow on the ground. So again, purple, blue, and white are on my brush. I want it, this light to be the biggest source. So I put a little bit of extra white on my brush and I'm in essence just kind of doing another layer on my ground, but I, I really want to tell the story of the light from this particular lantern. So I added a bit more lightness in through this area and I kind of want it to look like it's snow. So I'm really just kind of rubbing it in and making it a soft type of, um, type of element on this pathway or park or whatever you want to um, kind of imagine this place to be. And once I get this light spot in through here, I'm doing it a kind of at a little bit of a diagonal. I just want to make sure that it kind of blends into the rest. So I just picked up a little bit more purple, maybe a little bit more blue, just to get it to transition off into the darkness and make sure it just makes sense to, to the viewer that they understand what's you know happening. I think I just, I'm just i picking up a tiny bit of black paint just so this kind of gets a little bit darker in through here, but not too much. Just wanna make sure that it kind of fades into the darkness as we're, uh, um, as we're going towards this left-hand side. And I think that these lampposts are not providing too much light over here anyways, but maybe a little bit. Um, and just, you know, kind of keep fiddle with it until you feel like you've got it pretty good. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. You could also add any kind of little details back in through here if you felt like you wanted there to look like there's bushes or anything like that, feel free to do that. I am gonna amp this up a little bit, so I'm gonna put a touch more white on my brush and a teeny tiny bit of yellow. I don't know if I even said I was gonna use yellow, but literally I have a speck of yellow on my brush right now, just to provide a little bit more of a luminescent value. So it's not super duper white, but it does provide me with some bright um, light, but not going all the way white on me yet. And I'm really just want this to look like almost like a spotlight behind them. So I'm getting this area to be a bit brighter, of course, than these ones up and through here. These ones I can steer in a brighter zone later if I want to just by when I put the lamp in them. But this big one back here, I'll have a little opportunity to add more stuff to it later, but not as much as I will to these guys in through here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for my Lantern Glow. You can certainly keep fiddling with yours as much as you want to. We are going to be using um, our small brush 
Now let's use our chalk for the next step. So we'll use our chalk for the next step. So once you get this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we're going to draw the outline for our dancers. I'm gonna be using chalk, and again, it would be easier for you if your canvas was dry before you started this step. So I'm not going for any fine-tuned detail in this outline. I'm really just looking to make sure that I have them placed in the place that I would like them to be put um, and in the position that I want them to have. So that's why I'm using chalk. So that way, if I need to do any adjusting or anything like that, I can do that. Um, and it also helps me to plan it out. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have my male and female dancing in through here. Of course, you can have a mom dancing with her young son, or you can have whoever you want dancing together in through here. But I want one of them positioned right in front of this light in through here. So I'm gonna have my female dancer positioned in through here. So what I'm gonna do for her is I'm gonna draw kind of a curved line to indicate her posture, and then I'll build off of that. So I'm gonna have the top of her head somewhere in through here, and then I'm gonna have the bottom of this curved line I, you could even go directly below this and then maybe come an inch down from your um, from where your your ground meets your your um, sky area. And then as I do this, I'm going to give it a little bit of as I uh, connect these two, I'm going to give it a little bit of an arcing line, and that helps me to understand that I want her body to be in a in a posture that she's kind of leaning back a little bit. I'm going to have her head in through here but I also know that I'm gonna have an arm on top of this and her hair, but that just gives me a good gauge as to how I want it. I'm gonna have her waist right about here. This is gonna be about, I would say, a, about a third of the way down and through here. And then what I'm gonna do is just decide what I wanna do with the arms. So I'm gonna have her arms are gonna come off of her shoulder. We got shoulders in through there. I have one arm that's just kind of coming down from the shoulder and is just gonna be kind of draped behind her like she's dancing away. And then I have another one that's gonna be kind of coming up in through here and it's gonna be holding on to the male's hand. So I'm not even really gonna do much of a hand in through there, but this her arm's kind of like back a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give her an outline for her dress. Since this is going to be the waist in through here, I can kind of give her her a silhouette of the front part of her body in through there, and then a little bit of a silhouette of her back in through here. I'm not, again, concerned about her arms too much at this point. You'll see why in a second, because it's going to be covered with some hair. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her, this is going to be like her little rear end. This will be the front part of her, and I want her skirt to really splay out. So I'm gonna give myself some markers for the little tips of the skirt so I can have it really look like it's flowing. I'm gonna bring this down and meet it with that little marker in through there. I'll bring this down in a little bit of like a little wavy line to meet here, and then I'll connect here to here with a real ripply line to indicate the, the bottom of her skirt. The movement of her skirt is in a flowing type of way. She's gonna have a bunch of hair back in through here. So you can, if you want to, you can chalk it in or just leave it. And she's also gonna have a little bit of hair in through here. So again, that just tells us where those are gonna go. She'll have a couple little feet down in through here with uh, some cute boot, boot the, like the bottoms of boots. But that's all I'm gonna be doing for the outline for her. This just tells me where it is, gives me a good position. The other figure that I'm gonna do is gonna be a little bit taller than her. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the left of where she is, a little bit to the left of the skirt, and then I'm gonna go up maybe about a half of an inch to an inch and give another little marker. I'm gonna come straight down with a vertical line down to where I want the foot to be, and the foot's gonna be kinda of lined up with her, so somewhere in through there. And then I'm just gonna connect these two with a line. Again, this gives me kind of the a good base for his posture. He's gonna be, his movement is gonna be more in his arms than it is the rest of his body. So I'm gonna have the head similar with as her, just give myself kind of a little bit of a circle, but I want him to have a hat. So I'm gonna also give the little bit of a, um, of a outline for a hat on there. 
I'm going to have the, the shoulders are going to be somewhere in through here, the top, but I need to give him some arms, so I want to make sure that it connects to here. So if this is going to be his hand in through here, I'm just going to bring this down and kind of gradually get it to go into the shoulder. He's going to have a big sleeve, which will take care of it, but that gets me started. I need to know where the his waist or the bottom of his shirt is. So his waist is going to be similar in height to hers, but the bottom of the shirt I'm going to have coming down right about here, or his coat, whatever you want to refer to it as. Once I have that, this the his torso is just kind of a um, like a rectangle type of shape. So something like this is going to give me the shape of the body. I'm just going to bring this up for the sleeve so I know how wide that sleeve is going to be. That gives me just a little bit more information because he's got a little bit more clothing on the arms that I feel would help to know the shape of. And then he's going to have an arm coming down um, this left hand side, kind of almost like his arm is, I don't want to say on his hip, but maybe, you know, um, almost on his hip, in, in, a, in a dance movement kind of way on his hip. Then I need some legs. So the legs are gonna come out in through here. I want one of them to look like it's kind of kicked back and that's gonna be this right leg. So I'm just gonna take this from here down to about where the knee would be and bring it like this. Um, on the left hand side, the, the, the leg is gonna be this leg in through here, but it would be wider because this would be like the back end of it. So I'm just going to give myself a couple of lines down here and then this is going to come out for the pants. So this in essence is all going to be a silhouette black in essence, but this would kind of represent the outside leg and this would represent the inside leg. We just need the bottom parts and the movement of the knee and then the feet will come underneath that. You can make marks if you want to or not, but it's will be um, coloring them in. So that is all I'm gonna do with my outline. If you feel that you need to do any adjustments, feel free to do so. We'll be using our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our people. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'll be using black, white, I might use a little bit of yellow and I might use a little bit of blue and purple too, <laughs> but I'm definitely going to start with black. So how I'm going to do this, I'm basically just going to color in the um, entire area that we've already outlined. I'm going to do it with just black paint to start and then I will add all of my little um, silhouetted type of details or the details that are going to give myself or give it a little bit of dimension I will add those in after I have it done in black so when I'm doing this I am you can use a little bit of water on your brush if you want your paint to flow nice and um, fluid like it will give you cleaner edges. So I use a little bit of water on my brush just to get those edges down. But when I'm doing this, I know that I'm gonna have little details that I'm gonna contend, that I'm gonna wanna contend to, which is why I opted to use a small brush to get this, um, this flat color of black on here. You could certainly use a larger brush for these smaller areas, but I'm or for the um, main body of it, but I'm just using my small brush because I know I'm going to want to do details like these little feet that I'm going to do right now. So I'm just going to do a little heel and then the little front part of the shoe for her and I'm going to have them looking like they've got a little bit of uh, movement in them. So you can, you know, if these feet don't go right for you, you can always cover them with the with a skirt too, <laughs> but I just kind of am um, wherever I am at that moment, I will kind of just uh, fill in the little edge details. So right now, just kind of going right up to my chalk mark. And if you find as you're doing this that you don't want to go as far as your chalk mark is, that's okay. Just kind of let it be. You can always um, erase the chalk after the process is done with a little bit of water. I'm bringing this all the way to the edge. Her hair is going to take up a lot of this. I do want to um, give her, make sure that I save room for her hand so I'm not going to color this whole thing in with um, with paint but I definitely want to kind of give the illusion of some 
some long flowing hair in through here. So just kind of bringing this down with a little bit of um, movement and allowing for the silhouette of her body to still show as well. I'm going to put her hand on right now so I don't um, bring her hair down too far. So I'm going to bring this down in through here. Maybe her hand is going to kind of pop out. Yeah, that looks good. Something like that. And then I can control where I put the hair. Otherwise, I will just go crazy and put the hair everywhere and and then you won't be able to see her hand. <laughs> so you can do the same if you have that same control issue as I do. And then I'm just giving little edges to the hair. I'll do the same thing over on the right side, giving some little edges to the hair in a nice strategic spot where the shoulder would be. So if you have any kind of um, difficulty with the with the shoulder looking right as it's going to go up into the hand, up into the arm, you can certainly just put some hair there. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put her arm in through here. So I'm thinking of it being kind of back a little bit um, to reach her partner's hand. So this is one of those things that, you know, you could just got to think of where the wrist would be. And you could always use yourself as a um, kind of an inspiration model type of um, way as you're going through this if if it doesn't you know look right just kind of look at your you know put your own arm up in the air and say what does my arm do where does my elbow reach and you can certainly do it that way and of course hide it with hair if it doesn't work <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is just make this reach over into her partner's hand something like this and of course they're going to kind of meet each other so they don't have to I don't really need much detail in through here so I'm just now traveling into his hand in through here and into his little sleeve I need to make sure that his hand looks big enough so I'm going to give a little bit more fingers or um, information up and through there so it looks like it it works out well maybe his sleeve is a little bit longer and then I'm just gonna color him in too with black paint so I'm coming right down his sleeve and as you go through this process if you feel that your sleeve wasn't big enough or you need more movement in it just make the edges ripple a little bit more I'm gonna make sure that he's got a little bit of a shoulder to give a you know the illusion of a nice broad shoulder that's dancing away with this beautiful lady in the winter gonna have to have a neck something like that gonna color in the hat and the face and I, I'm not really concerned about facial details because I know that this is just a, a profile and I'm just gonna have some um, little highlights on the edge of it but if you felt that you wanted to add you know a nose or anything along that line you can certainly do so I'm going to go ahead and just add my rim of my hat maybe we're not even maybe we're just seeing the side of his head so maybe you wouldn't see it anyway so you can certainly feel free to um, manipulate that whatever way it looks best I think he needs a little bit of a jaw in through there there we go and then I'm going to just bring this black all the way down making sure that this shoulder over on the left hand side kind of works with the one over on the right so again these silhouettes are fun because there's lots of margin for error with them be because they are in the dark we get to you know practice our form or our figure drawing and construction on these silhouettes with you know a little bit more leeway and you know if something goes wrong we can hide it with a highlight or hide it with some snow or you know just kind of work another element into it and just allow allow ourselves for some good practice when it comes to these silhouettes so i'm just going to color in this whole bottom area in just kicking out a couple little pieces for the edge of his jacket bringing these areas all the way down i just needed a little area to tell me that he's got a knee kind of kicked back these two are going to kind of just merge into one another and then I'll have to decide what I want to do for his shoes. Um, I really probably wouldn't see all too much of the shoes if he's wearing, you know, long pants in the wintertime, staying nice and warm, but I definitely probably see um, the bottom of this one if this one is kicked up a little bit. So I'm going to give a little bit of a shoe like this, and then maybe that's going to be the kicked up 
part of the sole of the shoe that we see. So again, just kind of imagine it, the, you know, if what would your foot do if it was kicking back a little bit? This one we would probably, I would say maybe see the back of the foot like this, and then maybe a little bit of the front part of the foot is going in that direction. So something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strategically add a couple of little highlights um, in order to make these two people glow from the, the surrounding lights. So without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up blue, purple, and white, give her dress a little bit of movement in the ripples of the back of it. And you can have any intensity of these colors, but I wouldn't recommend going all the way white when you're adding these, um, the movement in their fabric, especially uh, when you're on the back side of that light. This is really just um, a step to give you, the viewer, the information that there is some flow to these um, pieces of fabric. Maybe I put a little bit in, in her hair, but not, like, not much. I'm really just looking to explain to the viewer, you know, that there is, you know, some movement here. I'm going to put a highlight on the edges in a minute to where the light is, but right now I'm just concentrating on these shadow areas. So blue, purple, and a touch of white on my dirty brush. I'm going to tackle a little bit on the, this back leg in through here just again so we can see the difference between these two legs. So just a little bit of a highlight on that back leg will do, will, that's all I need. I'm going to put a little bit on the, and it's not much of a highlight. Again, it's just a tiny bit lighter than the black, but it's going to show the viewer that there is, you know, some, some movement in here. Now I'm going to amp up my, maybe I'll put, sorry, I'm going to put a little bit more on this, um, on this hat too. A little bit, a little bit of highlight over here on the hat so we can see the, the rim of the hat. So now that I've got that in there, the, the highlights on the clothing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some real highlights on the edges of the bodies to indicate they're being lit up by the bright light. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm primarily going to use white paint. Um, but I may end up using a little bit of yellow as well. I'm getting rid of my chalk right now with a little bit of water on my brush so I don't get confused by my highlights versus my chalk. So I just put a little bit of water on my brush to erase that chalk mark. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, white paint on my brush and I'm going to really just kind of outline some of these um, pieces of the body. You won't necessarily see it terribly much when you're in this brightest area um, of the spotlight, but when you get farther along um, and further away from that spotlight, these bright highlights along some of the tips of the clothing really make a difference. So they'll, they're gonna explain to the viewer just how bright the light is that's shining on them and it'll give a bunch of information and structure to um, to the forms of the body so i just ran through a little bit of wet black so i just washed and dried my brush so i can make sure that i've got my bright highlight over in through here i can also add little highlights on the tips of the toes again that'll give you a little bit more information, tips of the pant leg in through here. This one will just get a, maybe a little bit over on that right hand side. And then you can put even in between this arm, put a little bit of highlight in through there. And then maybe on the face a little bit, if you feel like you can get away with little highlights on the face or on the tip of the hat, feel free to put them wherever you want. And then just make any little tweaks that you want. If you feel you'd be able to see the highlight on the clothing in through here, put it there. On the hands, go for it. In the hair, she probably would get a bright, bright highlight right around here if your background wasn't um, as light as you want. You can just add that highlight around. And then we are gonna be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your people nice and painted in and you've got all your little tweaks done that you feel are necessary, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint ourselves some lamp posts. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using black, blue, purple, yellow, and white. So all the colors on my on my palette. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to first put my um, the structure for the lantern on, then we'll do the posts, and then we'll come back and put some lights in our lanterns. So I'm going to start with some black paint. I'm really going to be just doing um, some simple decorative uh, shape to these. You could really get fancy and put whatever type of shape that you want for your lanterns. Um, I'll guide you through mine, but if you want to steer yourself in your own direction, feel free to do so. I'm going to do this one a little bit smaller than this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it with the shape of a U. So I'm going to put it, you know, in the center of my of my glow area and I'm just gonna kinda start with a U. You can kick out the top a little bit if you want to, but if you can try and get one side pretty similar to the other side, that would be fantastic. And then once I've got that shape on there, I'm going to decide what I want to do for the top. So I like, I'm gonna put a um, vertical line down through the center with a pointy top, or with a pointy tip at the top. So something like that. I'll put a little um, topper like this. And again, I'm just kind of freestyling this here. You can certainly do whatever you want. Maybe I'll put a little bit of a kind of an arcing cover on it like that. Maybe another decorative bump out in through there. And of course you can certainly modify yours into whatever you want. But once you've got your whatever shape you're going to do on um, on the lantern, you're going to try and replicate it on the other one. <laughs> so if one side is bigger than the other or one side is different than the other, no worries. It's, it's, a, it's a painting that we're just having fun with. So I can already tell this one's not um, super straight from one side to the other, but we're just gonna roll with it. I think it looks pretty, pretty enough. I can, I can disguise it with some, some, some lights on the inside. So I'm gonna follow the same kind of process on this one, only I want this one to be a little bit bigger, so it looks like it's closer to us. So I'm gonna attempt to get this one to come down a little bit more. Maybe just bring this down a little bit more in through here. And then what I'll do is I'm going to construct it in, in a similar way. So I'll put my, my top, just a line going through the center of it like that. And then I'll cover it with my horizontal line. I'm going to put a, um, the cover on it like this and like this. And again, feel free to make yours into whatever kind of style you would like. I'll bring this down so it is like a little triangle. Bump out a couple of pieces in through here and in through there. It's looking pretty good. Maybe we should bring this out a little bit further so they look more similar to one another. And then I just kind of keep adjusting it until I feel like it's similar enough and makes my painterly eye happy. And, and I'm pretty much there. That looks good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, paint the posts. So the posts are just going to start out as vertical lines. I'm going to use all four colors on my brush at the same time. So I have black, blue, purple, and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm just going to make a vertical line that's going to come down into my, um, my path or sidewalk, whatever this is, um, a little bit. So I've got all four colors on my brush and I'm just going to kind of go straight down. I'm really not terribly concerned about this being uber straight because again I'm gonna um, disguise it with some highlights and stuff like that so what I'm doing now is I'm picking up uh, purple blue and white because I know that I want this to get a little bit wider and a little bit brighter down at the bottom to um, give me a little bit of information from that light source so I'm just widening my post a little bit as it comes down towards the base and then again I can decorate the bottom of the base whatever way I want. So blue, purple, and white keep going on my brush. I'm going to take this and maybe I will bump it out one, maybe bump it out here, and then bump it out a little bit further 
at the bottom. So you can, again, decorate these whatever way you want. I, right now I'm just um, alternating my blue, purple, and black to get the shape on there. And then what I'll do is I will do some um, little dimensional um, highlights and shadows in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this one over here. So again, blue, purple, black, and white are the colors. I'm gonna go ahead and make my post coming straight down in through here. And again, it doesn't have to be super duper straight. Um, we're gonna have a snowstorm too on here, so that help, helps to hide a lot as well. So don't feel the pressure of making yourself a um, extremely straight post. I want this one, of course, to be a little bit wider than that one, so it appears to be closer to us. And again, I want it to be a little bit wider as it gets down towards the base of the, of the post itself. So I'm utilizing these four colors to provide me with a real natural and easy way to add some dimensional elements to these posts. I could just do a flat color like gray or something like that and then just um, add some details on top of that. But this kind of expedites the process for me when I'm using multiple colors on my brush so I can immediately have some sort of um, detail to them and then add the final detail. I want this left one to be bigger than this one so I need to come up just a little bit higher than here to provide that illusion. So I'm going to start this um, decorative element right in through here. I'm going to give myself two similar bumps. The top one's going to be smaller than the bottom one and again you can certainly decorate yours whatever way you want. I'm just kind of giving myself a generic type of shape that is easy for me to execute. So once I have that on there, I'm gonna give myself some details on these um, on these posts. So I'm going blue, purple, and white. I'm gonna drop the black for a second here so I can give myself some little bright highlights over on the side. Maybe give myself a little bright highlight in through here. I'm gonna pick up a touch of black right now in order to give myself some shadow on this dark side. I'm figuring that the left side is a, is a little bit shadowed, so I'm just making sure that I have some black represented over in through here. You can have the edge on the left side have a little bit of brightness to it because it's gonna have, um, it might see, see some of the light from the other side, but you just wanna make sure that this back side is pretty darn dark. So blue, purple, and white is what I'm gonna pick up for my highlight over on the right side of this lamp post in through here. And again, you can really get yours to be as bright or as subtle as you want, but whatever you do on one, just you know, try and mimic it a little bit on the other if you can. I'm gonna pick up um, a little bit of black for this dark side over here. So just bring in a little bit of black. And again, I'm kind of just right now with these little final details on, on this post, just giving, alternating the black, blue, purple, and white. You might find that you want yours to be brighter or darker or have more blue or have more purple. I just want it to look like a really cold um, winter post. <laughs> so blue, purple, black, and white are doing that for me with a little bit of highlight on that side. That's gonna be where the um, main light source is coming from. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush We'll be putting shadows underneath these, so don't be terribly concerned what happens at the bottom of these. Um, so just know that that's gonna be coming. I'm gonna wash and dry my little brush. I'm gonna put some light inside of here. So this is gonna pre be um, predominantly yellow and white, but you might find you just like the, the white, or maybe you like a lot of the yellow. So I have a little bit of white paint on my brush right now. I'm gonna put my brightest spot right in the middle here. You um, might find that I like the appearance of it kind of overlapping the iron piece of the, of the lamp. You might not like that, but I do so. <laughs> I like to overlap it a little bit. I just picked up yellow and white to give myself, um, I'm working my way out towards the exterior part with a little bit more yellow. So this way the interior part is gonna look like it's shining the brightest. And then once I've got that light in there, 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and utilize the remnants to give myself a little bit of a glow on the outside of the um, globe part of the lamp. So this is one of those steps that maybe you want your light to be really, you know, shining super bright. Maybe you just want it to be really subtle. Whatever works visually for you is totally fine. And if you felt that you wanted a little bit of detail on the top, you can certainly pick back up a little bit of the black, blue, um, purple, and white and just give yourself a little maybe highlight over on this top portion. So that's going to be a visual preference if you want that added detail at the top. I'm going to tackle the other um, bulb or lantern the same way. So wash and dry my brush, picking up white paint to start, giving myself that brightest highlight or the brightest light right in the center. And then once I've got that in through there, maybe give myself some little soft edges. I'm going to pick up some yellow with the white on my brush. If I felt like I had too much white on my brush, I would have wiped it off. But I'm feeling like I'm I'm in control right now, so I didn't need to really do anything additional, just kind of picked up a little bit of white with my dirty brush and just getting this glow to go farther out. And then again, um, if you feel like you have a lot of paint on your brush at this point, just wet off on your paper towel and utilize the remnants on your brush to give you this glow around the exterior edge of your um, of your light. I just ran through a little bit of wet black paint, so I'm taking a little bit of water on my brush to um, get rid of that black paint. So I just got a little bit of uh, wet paint there. So I'm going to reload my brush with a little bit of yellow and white so I can re-establish this glow on the outside. So if you do the same thing as I did and just run through wet black paint unintentionally, if you catch it quick enough, you can always just um, correct it with a touch of water and then once I've got my glow on here if I want to do those a little detail on the top purple blue and white are my accent highlight colors for my lamp po for the top decorative part so just putting these little streaks over on the right hand side that's going to give me a little bit of detail in through there and then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your lamp posts done and you've got as much bright light in them as you'd like, you can put this small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some shadows on the ground and snow in the sky. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, blue, purple, and white. I don't think I'm going to be using any yellow, but if I do, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to put some shadows on the ground. I really want these shadows to just look like they're kind of intermingled with some, some fluffiness on the ground. So I'm not going to use a lot of paint um, on my brush to create them, and I will most likely pick up some of the ground color as well just to make sure that they're intermingled. I'm going to start with a teeny bit of black paint on my brush. So just a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I just take it and I kind of squish my brush on the side of my palette so I can have control as to what's going on on the tip of my brush. And if I want to be extra cautious, I can just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. So now I have a very little bit. I'm going to put shadows underneath these based on this light source. So if you were to draw a diagonal line from the light source to the object and then keep going, that's the direction the shadow would naturally go in. So if this is here I'm, and draw a line to here, it's going to be in this direction. So I'm going to start at the bottom of here and I'm really just going to use this soft type of um, paint brush stroke in order to get the shadow on here but not to give it much detail and to make it feel like it's kind of intermingled with the s surrounding snow. So almost a dry brush type of technique. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one with a little bit at the bottom of this post and then just kind of bring this one a little bit further to the left because the post is further to the left when that's what the the uh, light source would tell me to do. So something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do these guys in through here. So I'm going to just reload my brush and kind of point the or flatten my brush in my in my paint. So 
Again, light sources here, so these would be kind of coming a little bit more like this and like this. So I'm gonna um, move my canvas so I can get to the bottom of it. I'm gonna have them small where they meet the feet and then they'll kind of get bigger and bigger as they dissipate and go farther away for the guy. For the girl, she's gonna have her little feet and her skirt and then her body just kind of disappears. So again, just control the amount of paint. So I've got his little legs in through here. I'm watching my um, my light source. I've got the foot in through here that's gonna have a little bit coming out in through here. This foot is off the ground, so I don't really need um, it to have a shadow touching the ground. So I'm just utilizing this. I'm maybe gonna go a little bit left to right so I can get it to intermingle with that snow a little bit. And then as it comes away from the body, I'm gonna get it to go bigger and bigger as if it's just getting skewed in the snow and as it's getting farther and farther away from away from the light source. So something like that, that works pretty well for me. And if you felt you needed, you know, you wanted a little arm or something like that, you could poke out a little part to just indicate it's showing the shadow of the arm. So for her, I'm gonna have um, it coming this direction. Let me just get my bearings here. I've got her, her skirt. I'll put her feet on in a minute, but right now it's gonna kind of concentrate on this skirt, giving, giving the viewer the information that it kind of flips out a little bit and then maybe gets more, a little bit more narrow as it's coming um, towards her waist in the shadow. So somewhere in through here and then maybe, maybe it kind of gets a little bit wider in through here. I want to give her a couple of little toes or little um, place where her feet are. So this one again is probably off the ground a little bit. I'm just using the corner of my brush. If you felt that you needed to, you could certainly utilize a smaller brush, but I'm just going to use the corner of my brush to get that to emulate that little foot in through there. That works. And then maybe I'll do a little piece in through here to indicate that this is the reflection or the shadow of the other little foot. And I'm using this brush so it does provide me with that um, carefree type of look to it. And I'm not um, concerned about the teeny tiny details. And I want it to kind of blend in with that background. So that's looking pretty good to me. And if you felt like you wanted to brighten up any of the snow in between there, you certainly could. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add snow in the sky. So I have black on my brush right now, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush. My snow is going to be a variety of different shades of snow. <laughs> so it'll be like this bluish, purpley kind of color, dark pieces. And as the snow gets towards the um, light sources, it'll be brighter and brighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some blue some purple and just a teeny tiny bit of white to start. I don't really want white snow to start, but I need the white on my brush so it's not see-through. So the purple and the blue are not see-through. So the white is going to help the opacity of it. So I have that on my brush and I'm just going to do little tiny dots all over the place. You could certainly utilize a different type of brush that's going to give you a different type of snow, but I'm going to do, I'm going to keep picking up um, my blue and my purple and maybe just alternating those two colors. I do like when I'm doing a snowstorm type of scene to have fluffy and soft looking snow, uh, which is not what these dots are. So what I like to do is I'm going to let myself kind of run out of paint on my brush uh, uh, while doing these bigger kind of floppy pieces of snow or these big snowflakes, I guess. Um, and then as I run out of paint, I will um, be able to get more soft looking pieces of snow and that's gonna provide me with a little bit more dimension to it. And I just kind of, I picked up a little bit more purple cause I, I want some various tones in here. So I just picked up a little bit of purple so I can have some purple pieces of snow too. And you can get these to go in front of your people if you want to, that would make sense because it's it's a snowstorm so the snow could fall everywhere. So I feel myself starting to run out of paint right now. I will be putting some lighter pieces um, towards the 
light sources in a minute, but now that I'm, I'm feeling myself run out of paint, this is when I can start to get a little bit more aggressive with the um, dotting because this is going to give me those softer, um, almost like dainty little tiny pieces of snow right from the tippy tip of my brush. And again, you can certainly make yours as bright or as dark as you want. I'm just giving mine the feel of a nighttime type of snowstorm with these purpley and blue tones to it. And now that I've got that, I'm going to start picking up a little bit more white to the equation. So this is where I'm going to start to get closer and closer. So blue, purple, and a little bit of white. And of course, you could use your small paintbrush too if you wanted little tiny pieces. So this is where I've got a little bit more white on my brush and I'm going to give the pieces of snow right near my lamps the light source, those are going to be a little bit more white. So that's going to provide you with that illusion that the the light source from each one of these lights is lighting up the pieces of snow that are around it. So I'm going to do the same thing over in through here. And it just provides you with a, a nice unique allusion to it. Um, gives you a little bit more of that realistic feel to it if you've got these um, extra bright pieces that are around the light source. I think I am going to switch to my small brush. I'm picking up my small brush. I think I really want a couple of sparkly pieces of snow so I just picked up my small brush and I'm going to add some nice um, bright white ones right around here. Give it that almost magical feel, especially in this area near where the near where the dancers are. So this will give me this will give my painterly eye a nice feel and magical touch to it as it's uh, as they're dancing the night away in this beautiful snowstorm. So I might fiddle with mine a little bit more with the snow, but if you feel like you've got enough snow on yours and you've got all of your sparkly pieces the way that you want them to be, we all, we have one tiny little step left to go and it's gonna be with the um, small brush. So once you get your snow done, you can um, put your large brush away take out, I've got both of my brushes in my hand right now. I'm just noticing I've got both brushes in my hands. Um, that's what you do when you can't decide which one that you want. You just put them both in your hand at the same time. Um, but once you've got your, your snow done, you can put your uh, big brush away, wash and dry your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I think I'm going bottom left on this one. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a magical winter image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>